Alrighty, hello. If you're wondering why I'm a buck naked at Bloodbones, it's because uh, I'm going to be discussing food today. So, as you see, Bloodbones are one of the hardest mobs to fight, and I have 1% survivability. I have 191 defense, I'm basically completely naked. None of these have defense stones on them, so. Um, no keychains equip nothing. Um, and as you can see, I can't survive here. But, first off, I want to talk to you about how ridiculous HP or health food is. So, let's go ahead and equip some sandwiches. Nothing has changed to my stats, I just have some healing food now. Resource 56 HP. Okay, nothing has changed. Um, how about putting some cheese on? 3%. Um, you'll notice that this heals way more HP than I have. That doesn't matter. So you can see the difference between this is only 1%, and this still is overhealing me. But the cheese still gave me more survivability than the ham did, just because it's a higher number. So let's go ahead and combine the two. And what do you know? I can suddenly survive 100%. It jumps from almost nothing to 100%. And it always says that. That's a very common thing with survivability. But you'll notice I have 191 defense. I also am running Forsaken, just for to, to prove the point home. Um, it is incredibly easy to survive uh, AFK um, in this game if you're using HP food. Um, as you can see, 191 defense. You should be able to get 191 defense out of World 1. Maybe slightly into World 2. I guess you have to unlock the FMJ bubble. But 191 defense is not a tall order. Um, I could, you know, equip anything. And you can see it just jump. So. Do not underestimate healing food. And if I had less healing food. Like, the, the reason why these are so high is because my account upgrades. And um, for my Aestra specifically, the uh, Scylla's statue. Because it, it increases feasty statues percent by 76 percent. Um, that's why the healing is so insane. So however much health this restores will b dramatically boost your uh, survivability. But the thing is, you could just stack all this HP food. Okay. So now we'll be discussing a little bit more intricacies. So for the food slots, this will be slot one, slot two. Slot 3, Slot 4, Slot 5, Slot 6. Um, sometimes, basically, the slot that food is in will matter. When the game is trying to calculate what food it's going to consume, um, the slots can come into play. When you're AFK, only works AFK. You, only one slot of food is consumed at a time. So here, I'll go... We'll run back to town and grab some one-hour candies to show you what I mean. Um, so. Um, and all healing food has the same consumption rate at um, 120. Or, no, it has a, a max consumption rate. Of 120 units per um, hour. Because basically this has a 30 second cooldown. I can actually only use one or two every minute. So if you AFK for an hour, it's 120. Um, so let's go ahead and show off another thing. Um, the game will also try to consume whatever slot would be consumed the quickest. So you'll see I have a lot more cheese than I do bread, Yeti ham, cheesy pizza, not witches. So e even though, so normally it would be consumed by slot 1, slot 2, slot 3, slot 4, slot 5, slot, and then slot 6 in that order. Um, but that only applies if all of your foods that are in those slots get consumed at the same rate. So it doesn't matter in this case because the lower the, uh, the the less stack size that you have, the faster that that can, slot can get consumed because it has just less in it. 
the game basically tries to run you out of food um, as quick as possible. So to demonstrate what I mean, um, let's go ahead and put all these on. Now you'd think that the cheese would get consumed first because it's in slot one, but actually it should be the nom witches um, or pizza. I'm actually not sure which one it'll prioritize here because both of these have a max consumption rate of 120 per hour, but they both restore different HP. So let's go ahead and see. And you'll see I'm at 100% survivability. Woohoo. So it actually consumed the pizza because it was in a higher slot. So it will still consume the pizza now because it has less non winches, less than non winches. So even though I put this in a lower slot now, it'll still consume the pizza. Voila. So slot size, there's the slot size, bleh. slot order does not matter unless all of the things would have an equal consumption rate. But you can see I'm protecting my cheese, my ham, my mountain bread, all that, with relatively cheap pizza. So that is what we're going to get into now. So let's go ahead and just equip what we need to survive. Um, I'm actually going to need to go grab some more um, ham for this demonstration. this excess go ahead and get rid of that okay so as you can see stacking food helps you survive so a common thing you can do is go ahead and stack food till you reach survivability 100% and now I have four extra food slots so let's say I can produce a ton of bullets well I can go ahead and protect my food because these bullets will get consumed faster than the food generally so um, instead of spending money on food, I can now use these bullets up. And you'll see the bullets got used. So, so that's neat. Um, but the same also applies, like, let's say I want these small speed pots. So, um, because there are less bullets in this stack size, and these two have the exact same consumption rate, the bullets will be used before the small speed potions, which is very useful because small speed potions can allow you to speed cap mobs that are generally more difficult. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, even if these two had the exact same slot size, um, the bullets would be consumed first because they're in slot one. So let's go ahead and just grab a couple more bullets. So that's the max slot size there. So if I were to switch these two, the small speed pots now are getting consumed. But now in this configuration, I know it says, you know, it's a 50% chance to be consumed every 10 meters walked. That is not how it works AFK. While you're AFK, this is actually just 15% chance to be consumed whenever you're killing an enemy. It has the exact same text as this one. Um, while you're active, this is how this works, the 10 meters walk thing. As soon as you become AFK, it changes. Um, little tidbit there. So currently, now the bullets will get consumed first, then the small speed, po speed potions, then the Yeti ham, then the sheepy dairy. That is how the current um, food would get consumed in that order. Um, and I can prove it by using another hour candy. I'm going to burn through these for this video. Boom. Voila. So we are now protecting small speed potions. But the thing is, we can also add more to that. Now, the bullets are still the only one getting consumed here. So now, instead of having 165 movement speed while AFK, I'm suddenly at 243. That's huge. Um but the bullets are still the only thing getting consumed. Nothing has changed in my overall consumption. Um, oops. Let's go here. And you'll see still maintaining 100% survivability, and I'm literally surviving off of nothing but bullets. So very useful. 
Um, and then the reason why I was bringing up speed pots is because, well, let's go to frogs, for instance. I'm getting 38,000, but let's say I took these two off. 33,000. Pretty massive difference just for equipping these two. They, it's not even like I'm consuming them. I only consume them if I AFK long enough to go through all of my bullets, all of my speed bots, small speed bots, then it will consume these two. Um, and also, you'd, it's not like you need these two here, because they're frogs. So, um, Another thing that tremendously helps for hard to dam or hard to move speed cap maps is the weapon speed so i do that and wow suddenly the we the weapon speed tremendously increases it same thing with the uh, afk chains as well so we're at 58k just one thing that takes up to 60 so so okay now we know that we can protect um these potions lovely um the consumption rates of different foods is dependent on whatever the chance to be consumed per kill is and like i said these ones turn into you know per kill so this is an eight percent chance to be consumed and this is a 15 percent now if these two had the exact same stack size the 15% gets consumed first because you consume more of those per hour. You're consuming, you know, 15% of whatever your overall kills are compared to 8%. And, you know, 15 is a bigger number than 8. So if these two have the exact same stack size, the 15 gets consumed first. Don't even need to do a, like, any of the complicated maths for how much, uh, you know, you consume. Not that they're very complicated, but they can be a little bit annoying. Um, and same thing with this. So increase XP gain by 5%. 10% chance to get consumed every hour. Well, that's still lower than the 15. So now, all of a sudden, I can equip these two potions. And I'll never consume them. Because they're lower than this 15. So as long as they're the same stack size or more, um, uh, they're never going to get consumed. So now another useful tidbit is we can go to the Rams map where my shrine is located. Um, something I like to do, just in case, is I just like to put more into this. Um, the like, Let's say you have two that are equal. So this is a 15, this is a 15. Well, if I just make this stack size tremendously more than the regular, like the, than the one I want to get consumed, this one is always going to get consumed first now. So now this one is super protected. Um, Granted, you want to make sure, like, let's say I put both of these at 19k. Now, this stack could sometimes get consumed slower than this one, even though the percentages are different. Because this is a tremendously lower stack size. So, to make things less complicated, always use the same stack sizes, I would say. Um, and except you want a lower stack size for the specific one you would be trying to consume. So in this case scenario, I would, you know, um, pump all of these up so that the bullets are still the ones getting consumed. Um, same thing with the health foods. You, you don't want the health foods to be too low of a stack size because they will also follow the same rule. If they're, if they're lower enough of a stack size, they'll get consumed first. And the reason the game does this is it doesn't want me to be putting one cheese down here and having 100% survivability and it never getting consumed. If you do that, it will consume the cheese and you will die AFK. Your survivability will drop to 1 or 0%. So, don't, uh, don't forget that. You definitely want to keep your stack sizes consistent, in my opinion. There are, you know, if you want, you can figure out all of your consumption rates and figure out what stack size you want versus what, but that's a little bit too complicated for this video, and I think also just not really worth the effort. Um, so, that is pretty much those. I'm um, thinking... Um, and another thing you can take advantage of is the skilling food also has some interesting tidbits. So, let's go ahead and clean all this out. Do. 
But that's if you want to use boost dudes. If you want, you can just equip your whole, you know, pallet up with um, healing foods and be just as fine. Um, it just comes in handy because, you know, you want to be speed capping mobs. So, for instance, rams. So, uh, let me put some armor on, I guess. Yeah, good enough. So, right now I'm getting 1,800 kills per hour. Well, if I equip a speed bot, 1,900. They help. Especially for mages and warriors. So, don't underestimate the, the use of speed bots. And if you're using speed bots, being able to protect them because they can be kind of a pain in the butt to get is very useful. Okay, so let's talk about skilling food now. If you're wondering why I have all this stuff locked and weird, you know, why am I doing that? It's because that's actually my usual loadout, which I will show at the end of the video. Um, so, skilling food now. Let's go ahead and grab these time candies. And, um, bleh, bleh, yes. So, first off, with skilling food, they work a little bit different. In, in that you only actually need one um, of the food to um, be active the whole hour. So right now I'm getting 1,833 logs. Woohoo! Um, if I equip one skilling food, I suddenly jump to 2,659. And if I use a time candy, it'll still be 2,659. So I will go ahead and destroy a time candy to prove it. 2,659, even though I only consumed one of the um, boost foods. Now, I could stack the boost foods, and that would still apply. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the posterity's sake. Um, so instead of 2,659, how much are we getting now? 3,873 with both of them, and lo and behold, use a time candy, and you do indeed get the boost food, even the event food, for the entire time. So, neat. Um, but, we can even take this a step further, and take the that whole protecting food thing, and apply it to um, boost foods as well. So, these are a little bit more complicated. This is a 10% chance to get consumed every swing and a 1% chance to get consumed every swing. Okay, so we need saucy log fries to be no more than a factor of 10 larger than Chognog. Now, I know that sounds a little complicated, but we can make it easy. If I, let's say, have a 100 Chog fries, Chog frogs, chog nog. I need my log fries to be less than a thousand stack size. So let's go nine nine. Oh, nine nine nine. So if I were to take this number, like uh, my stack size, a hundred, multiply it by ten, because that is the difference between one and ten, I get one thousand. I only need this stack size to be less than that 1,000, and the log fries should be consumed first. And in, I'll, I'll even put it in a different order. Um, like so, normally it'd be consumed slot one, slot two, but um, right now the log fries should be consumed first, and we'll go ahead and try it. I mean, they might consume both of them, but nope. They consume the log fries first. So that is how you can protect boost foods. If you really want to. Um, so. To take that to its end. Let's say I have 520 boost foods. I could put you know an additional 500 on here. So 600-ish. I could put 620. That would be um, 6,200. 
but let's just say we used 600. I could have a stack size of up to 5,999 of log fries, and they would the log fries would still get consumed first. The reason why you do that is so you could AFK longer. You saw how I went from 999 to 840. So that means I could AFK here with this configuration for, you know, an additional... Um, we're, we're consuming about 159 an hour, you know, an additional six, seven hours, or, uh, no, uh, yeah, five, six hours, whatever. I could, you know, boost that then to a day or two if I were to try to protect my entire stack. This is a dangerous thing to do, though, because if you AFK too long, it will consume your Chognog, which gets consumed at a relatively low rate, but it will consume it. So you have to be very careful when you're trying to protect boost foods. Um, I would recommend always leaving extra in your bank. Do ne like never ever use your whole stack of boost foods on a character, and then lose out on having them for like sampling or you know other things. In fact, I wouldn't even use the whole 600 here. Even 20 remaining, I, I think, is too low for just in case. Like let's say you know something in real life happens and you AFK too long. Well. You could just kiss your good boost foods goodbye, and, and um, you just don't want that be, to be looming over your shoulders. I think. I mean, you know, play the way you play. But so that is how you can do brute, protect boost foods, and the the same applies. You just you know have to work out the numbers depending on what your stack size is and all that. Um, but hopefully, I made that as clear as I could. Besides, you know, uh, you could use a spreadsheet or something to really figure it out but so yeah that is how you know if you wanted to you could use a bunch of sandwiches to afk at blood bones you would only consume sandwiches or you could use you know three triple speed pot bullet bullet um to do that kind of stuff and that is why um bullets are also pretty pretty valuable um they have fairly high consumption rates so they can protect a lot of foods because to protect, let's say, this, I need a higher than 8% chance. So, boom, bam, it's 12. So I can use FMJ bullets, for instance, to protect these. I can also just use regular bullets. Bull regular bullets have the highest consumption rate of majority of the foods, which is really useful because you can mass produce them. I mean, by the time you're trying to farm rams or blood bones, I think 10 forest fire and 10 flies could be, you know, relatively easy. Let's get, let's just take a look. 96 million flies, 110 million forest fires. I think I'm good for a while. So that is why using bullets can be very handy. Um, if you, you know, take the effort to actually go through and, you know, set up your food in such a way to do so. But, um, you can also use like regular speed pots, um, these just because you can buy a lot of them from the shop a day. I think it's uh, what, 30k each. So that is also a good source. Um, so yeah, that would be pretty much my general gist on uh, boost foods. Um, some other tidbits to note is um, chance to not consume. Percent chance to not consume is all multiplicative. So, which, I mean, for people who don't know uh, what that means or that sounds confusing, all you have to know is it's a very powerful. Um, but it also never reaches 100%. And actually, I think Chance Not Consumed is also hard capped at 90% Chance Not Consumed, or 95, I can't remember. Um, but, uh, or actually, no, it's all additive, I think. Yeah, it's all additive, and it's multiplicative to your overall whatever you're consuming yeah it's it's additive um so yeah very very useful very very powerful effect to not consume food there's a star sign for it too percent chance to not consume food mages have a very useful talent for it um and that can also help mitigate so let's say i'm protecting bullets so let's go ahead and actually we'll go to one of my characters that are afk You'll see this is my general food layout for death noting. I got a couple speed pots. They actually do help damage a little bit due to the alchemy bubble, but it's mostly for just move speed capping some mobs. Um, uh, then bullets, I mean, pretty massive damage increase just for a food slot. And as you can see, right now in this configuration, only bullets are getting consumed. 
Um, um, and then with the mages, the, so those characters start out with 14k. Oh, right now my Shibi Dairy is actually being consumed because this mage has a uh, very high, uh, very low defense. But, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's how I'm configuring it anyway. Uh, this free meal, uh, forty two percent chance to not consume food is huge. It's very, very, very strong. Combined with the void bags, you can AFK for like a week, um, probably longer. I actually don't know. I could probably AFK on this character for. Geez, 20 days or something. Just a massive amount. Um, but yeah, that's why I just equip bullets on all my characters, and uh, it's, it's very convenient. Um, you only need to... The only annoying part is you just have to make a lot of bullets, but I don't know. I just make like a batch of 200k, and it lasts more than a week. So um, yeah, but that's how utilizing boost food to your the greatest effect works. Um, and as I said, I'll go ahead and show what my rams setup is uh, I'll go ahead and grab these so we'll go ahead and equip my regular armor and you'll see I mean I'm, I'm wearing goo shoes I'm wearing time rings you know generally things that don't have defense um, put these on Oops. So annoying how you can't take them out. I guess I could just unlock the slots, but I'm too lazy. Or I don't know. I'm not too lazy. That's not the right word for it. Stubborn. <laughs> so this is my normal food layout for Rams. Um, these two would be highest stack size, but uh, as you can see, 100% survivability, 3,100 kills an hour. Um, and I can actually get that higher if I go ahead and swap from this character that has my respawn. Actually, yeah. So, oop, there we go. Clears all those uh, locks out. If you have a uh, locked slot and you reload the map, it's kind of funny. It just clears your slot. So if like you swap from another character. Um, so yeah, this would be my RAM setup, and as you can see, I'm only surviving with 464 defense and a stack of cheese, and that, the, honestly, the stack of cheese is overkill. I could, I, I don't need nearly as much defense. Uh, this has a lot of defense, could get rid of that. You see, still at 100%, like 289, you know, I could go less, um. Still 100%. So, defense is pretty relevant. Food is really overpowered. And that's uh, what you could take away from this video. But as you can see in this current configuration, obviously gold food cannot get consumed. <clears throat> so, my average speed pots would get consumed first, then decent, then small XP, then average XP, then she'd be there in this order and lo and behold voila we have a little bit less so yeah hopefully you guys found that video helpful um, I hope I didn't miss anything um, some things end up being obvious to me but they're not obvious so it's just because I've been playing a while so I you know forget to mention some things that just seem obvious to me but they aren't but yeah, that's how you can utilize boost foods to your greatest effect. Um, other tidbits to note is the Feasty statue is very, 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 very strong. Um, probably too strong. Um, I could even go as far as say one of the more overpowered mechanics in the entire game. Uh, but I digress. As you can see, this is a ridiculous statue and probably needs to be nerfed. Um, same thing with you know boost foods, potions and stuff. Uh, very strong uh, I think there's one in here or no we don't have one for regular food effect I don't I don't think um, 
So those kinds of effects are just really powerful. You, like food cannot be underestimated. So it's just very, very, very strong. Um, also, why I highly recommend getting as many food slots as possible. It's a very high tier gem shop upgrade. Very high tier um, uh, world three task board upgrade. Um, yeah, because you could just you know utilize double XP potions. I mean, they're not much, but every bit how it helps. Um, and the speed pots especially. So yeah, hopefully you found that video helpful. Um, I'll talk to you later. Oh, and uh, I'll be probably doing um, either an alchemy video next or a dungeon, like uh, what credits and flurbo upgrades to buy first in the dungeon. Um, just depends on time. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching.